Hey everyone, welcome back to the Close to Home podcast. This is Brennan Klaus and I'm here with... Tracy Erickson. Oh, there she is. Welcome back. How's your morning going, Tracy? Oh, you know, Brennan. (laughs) Just another typical morning? One more cup of coffee. One more cup of coffee. Okay, all right, cool. Yeah. Well, we are so excited today to have back on the podcast, Stacia Weishar with Cornerstone. Hello, Stacia. Hi, you guys. Excited to be back. Thank, Thank you for, you for joining us. us. Yeah, not only one podcast, but two. We are so <laughs> excited. We well, there's a lot to cover. Life. There's a lot to cover with mortgage and finance. It's so just for days. Talk it's riveting. Days. And you, you can't really, honestly, this is a good lesson for anyone listening because you can't really cover it in just one episode. You really need more than one. Yeah. It's so complex. Yeah. So complex. not an it's not an internet search. Well, if you listen to the first episode, you heard all about the difference between on calculators and what people are actually pre-approved for, and kind of the process behind um, getting a loan. What what you and your team, Stacia, are doing during that process. But today, we want to talk about a new, really hot topic, which is refinancing. Oh, so. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you could start and tell us why is refinancing such a hot topic right now for someone who has no idea about finance? Like, why is refinance exciting at this point? It's exciting. Well, it's exciting because interest rates are really low. I mean, um, money is inexpensive um, to borrow and it's it's cheap. Um, and what you know, is low? <laughs> well, it depends on the, so that's, everybody goes, what's the rate today? Well, there's a wide, wide, wide range, right? So it's based on your loan amount, It's based on the type of financing. Are you conventional conforming? Are you high balance conventional conforming depending on your county that you're in? Um, Are you jumbo? Um, What's your debt to income ratio? What's your loan to value? Value being the uh, the value of your property versus your loan amount. So there's this kind of like wide range, right? So, but interest rates are, I would say um, like on average three and a half percent like jumbo is like down to the low twos. Um, and the type of loan too, are you on a 30 year fixed? Are you on a, are you on a 20 year fixed? Are you on a 15 year fixed? Are you on an adjustable rate mortgage? What's really interesting right now is, is when the pandemic hit in March, um, uh, mortgage interest rates did these like crazy, crazy things. <laughs> Craziness. Um, I remember one day and I'll just tell you a brief story. I had a client who called me one morning and he was like, okay, let's refinance. And for his specific scenario at that moment in time, um, oh, and also type of property impacts interest rates as well. So are you in a condo? Are you in a townhome? Are you in a, um, are you in a co-op? Are you in a, a home, a single family home? So all of these kind of components come into play when it comes to your interest rate as well. Um, and so this client called me and said, for his specific scenario, I said, okay, I'm going to, I want to lock in this rate. Let's, 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 let's refinance. But I was waking up at five in the morning because the markets were really, really volatile in March. And um, I still wake up early when I know there's going to be some volatility and when the markets first open and I'm starting to look at the marketplace and watch interest rates to see if there's opportunity for clients. And so this specific client, I'd, I'd been up since four and I was kind of getting prepared and I was like, today, do that. You've got to lock it in. Like right now this morning, like six o'clock, I'm messaging him. He's like, it's really early. I said, this is it. <laughs> Let's do it. Um, and by the time he's like, I'll call you at three, three 30. I'm like, okay. And I kept watching the market and I was like, oh my goodness, like this is insane. Um, I'm like, it's continuing to get worse. I think you should lock in now and like text me your questions, email me your questions. Like I'll call you this afternoon, no big deal. By the time he called me and about that point in the day, it was 3.30 and I, I was just like, I can't even explain my day. Um, I The interest rate when he called me was two points higher, two percentage points higher than what it was that morning. And we saw this crazy volatility. And the reason that happened actually is kind of this unprecedented thing that we've never seen before in yeah. financing. Um, like everything else in the year 2020, it was unprecedented. And what happened was, is the mortgage-backed securities, um, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are conventional mortgage-backed securities, and they're really driven by the bond market. And when the pandemic first hit, what happened was, um, in a normal world, right, you write your checks to, let's say, Cornerstone or ABC Institution, but that loan gets packaged and bundled and sold back on the secondary market for conventional financing to Fannie and Freddie. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac mortgage-backed securities, government-sponsored entities um, per the last recession, they were bought out of distress. And so the federal government really has influence on the mortgage-backed securities. Well, in a normal world, right, you still write your checks as a consumer to institutions, you have no idea this is happening, but it's packaged and bundled to the secondary market, the secondary market then puts it into these 
let's call it investments in silos. And then the Goldman Sachs of the world buy these investments and put them into our portfolios and they end up in your 401ks and investment portfolios, right? That's how the world normally works. But when the pandemic hit, <laughs> the Goldman Sachs of the world were like, whoa, 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 we're not buying those mortgage-backed securities. It's too high of a risk. And so they stopped buying them. So the federal government said, well, we're not going to have a liquidity crisis again. We're not going to have a housing recession. We're not going to have a liquidity crisis. We want consumers to be able to continue to buy property. We want people to still be able to buy homes. We want people to continue to be able to refinance if they need to. And so they came in to the tune of billions, billions and billions and billions of dollars of federal money that they printed and purchased mortgage-backed securities in these massive swings off the secondary market. They're like, the market was freezing up and they said, we're going to spend $40 billion today and we're going to buy mortgage-backed securities off the secondary market. And what that did and my example of my client was he was just caught in this perfect storm. And I was like ready to throw my computer out that day. I just started laughing when he called me and I didn't mean to do this. Like, I don't yeah. know. But what was happening was they were buying these mortgage-backed securities and it caused this massive, massive like, instability around what lenders do, which is hedge. So what we do is we hedge um, what interest rates are going to be in the future. And so when they were doing this, the federal government thought they were helping, which in theory they were, but it was caused this massive inability to hedge what interest rates would be in the future. So lenders were like, oh my God, interest rates are just swinging. Um, that has stopped, right? And so that so companies like mine and across the United States, they all got together and they're like, time out, time out, like stop doing what you're doing because it's not yeah. allowing us to properly price or hedge rates because we're seeing these massive market swings on the bot. Like it's just causing- So they said that to the government that was trying yes. to bail it out? They said, okay. They said, stop. Oh, Stop buying it. In massive swings at $40 billion. Like don't Got take $40 it. billion okay. dollars in a day and buy mortgage-backed securities off the second year because it causes these wow. unstable marketplaces. So that's what was happening in March, early March. And that's, I mean, I and think- so yeah. Sorry, just to, to make sure I understand and everyone listening. So if the government hadn't bought those out, would the would the interest rate gone up drastically? Is that what would have happened? Like, did that help or aid from the government keep the interest rate lower? Um, the aid has helped keep rates low. It was, okay. the, uh, it, it was the mechanism of which they were doing it, which caused questioning and kind of instability on hedging. Okay. Yeah, the large quantity is all in one. Yeah, yeah. So Got that it. has stopped. And so, but the feds have been really um, great in that they've, I believe, my opinion is that they've, you know, they've, they've kept continuously kept this liquidity happening, which has caused rates to go low. Um, as most consumers do, um, when the federal government meets, they talk about the crime rate. That happens quarterly. They're like, rates are zero. You don't even know how many times my phone is. <laughs> Mortgage rates are not zero, but the Fed rate is zero. Like the federal government has committed to keeping the um, interest rates with um, really in ex really low for the next two years. That's what they're stating, right? That's what Powell's stating. Um, and so what that is is it's it's uh, short term debt, so student loans, car loans, credit cards, um, and, but it does have a bearing impact on mortgage backed securities as well. Um, so I do believe that interest rates are going to continue to stay low. It's why refinancing is an exciting topic. Um, you know, I I would say if you're over three and a half percent right now on a conventional loan, you should refinance. Uh, um, what's fascinating though, and what's really interesting is some of the economists and analysts that I listen to are, and are very intelligent, um, are stating that rates are gonna go lower again next year. And I'm like, how is that possible? What's gonna happen? Is, would that only be possible with the government help as again? Is that how it would I be? I don't know. I mean. The, more, the purchasing of the mortgage-backed securities, I mean, what's, what's been really interesting, and you guys know this, is that housing has continued to be very stable. Um, yeah. It's been a great investment yeah. for people. For sure. And so, you know, what's been normal again, normalized, so that, you know, more the, the Goldman Sachs, the world, are purchasing mortgage-backed securities. So we are seeing this continuous, like, investment, uh, secondary market liquidity happening, which is great. And the Fed still are, like, making sure that they're helping Fannie and Freddie um, not end up in a liquidity crisis. I think they've got their finger on the pulse on that. Um, so, you know, I think what's interesting is like, is now a great time to refinance or not? Um, and really what I tell my clients is you want to see at least a half a percent or more savings on your rate. Okay. Okay. So at least a half a percent reduction. So if you're at 3%, three and a half percent, and you want to go down to 3%. You know, there's, there's really questions, three questions I ask clients when I call them, they go, I want to refinance. And I go, why? 
<laughs> That's my first question. Why? Yeah. Well, I've heard rates are low. Okay. Well, I mean, yes, they are potentially lower than where you're at, but are you going to keep your house? Do you have plans to sell your house? And if so, when are your plans? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. Four years from now. Okay. Four years from now. So four years um, is a, you know, it seems like, I guess in our world today, it seems like a lifetime. I mean, March seems like it was like 10 years ago in my world. Yeah. For, sure. for everybody. <laughs> um, <laughs> but four years, you know, that's a pretty short period of time from an investment perspective on your real estate. And so like, when are we going to recoup the costs associated with refinancing? And there are costs, right? Sometimes you can absorb those costs by having a higher interest rate. It's called a rebate. You get a rebate back from the lender. Um, and sometimes there is no rebate. Like you get the rate for the day. It sort of depends. So everybody's financing, as I've always said, is as unique as them, their DNA, their property, their situation. And so yeah. what we do is we do a deep dive analysis and we say, okay, are, are we at least a half a percent or more? And then um, when are we recouping the costs, right? right. So we have, we have software and technology and um, we do, you know, deep math dives on that to make sure that the consumer is really recouping the costs associated with refinancing. Yeah. And, and can, you, break -even point is. can you talk a little bit more about that break even point? Because I think what a lot of people don't understand is there are costs up front to refinancing. Yeah. So while that, let's say hypothetically, it costs a thousand dollars to refinance, right? And yeah. so maybe your mortgage payment is going to be lowered ten dollars a month, mm -hmm. right? But mm -hmm. so over a year you're saving one hundred and twenty dollars, right? And so it's going to take you, mm -hmm. you know, nine Every ten years month. to get that back. Yeah. So that's kind of the analysis you're going through, right? Is like when are you going to make that money back over time? Yeah, exactly. And when are you going to? So like you look at your upfront costs. Let's say it's two thousand dollars, right? And then you take your monthly savings, and it's pretty simple math. I mean, anybody can do it and say, okay, what's my monthly savings, and where are my upfront costs, mm -hmm. and then when am I going to recoup those costs based on the savings I have monthly? However, it's really interesting, and what I try to coach my clients to do is, have you been comfortable making your mortgage payment currently? Like, are you are you comfortable making the payment that you've been making? And if the answer is yes, then I tell my clients, if you're going to refinance. Let's continue to set it and forget it. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. Keep it at that place Smart. and let's overpay that principal balance. So even yeah. though you might be saving, so and again, everybody's situation is unique, but if you're going to be, if you're fine and you've you've been able to pay that $120 delta, let's just say, for example, in your example, Brennan, consistently, let's take that extra $120 and let's apply that to the principal balance. And what's really interesting then is you get these massive sort of compressions on how much more money goes to principal versus interest. And so you're, 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 you are controlling that amortization schedule. So you're the one that's pushing money, more money towards principal than um, just following the regular amortization schedule. And with that, you're shortening the life of your loan and you're potentially pushing that, that principal balance down and you're building equity, right? And so, yeah. um, so if you turn around and sell in four years, you might have more equity within the property um, and which gives you the ability for a bigger down payment on that next house when you sell this property. And so that's, those are things that you also need to think about. It's not just, I'm yep. getting a lower rate. That's great, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's the whole picture. And so really right. working with somebody who can kind of walk you through that. And again, sometimes it's just on saving money. You know, the other thing too, is with clients right now, <clears throat> a lot of Americans right now are sitting on a ton of equity, a ton of equity. And the reason for that and why this is different than, um, you know, this, we are in a recession, right? This is, we are in a recession. We're going to continue to stay in a recession um, more than likely moving forward. But housing is, has continued to perform very strongly. And there's several reasons for that. But one of the reasons is, is that um, after the housing crisis in the early 2000s, um, we, the, the mortgage-backed securities, not we, the mortgage-backed securities made it harder to get a loan. <laughs> it's not easy to get mortgage financing. It's it's not impossible, but it's not easy. Like we make sure you can repay your right. debt. We make sure you've got reserves, all those things. That's why it takes 30 days to close. That's right. Well, <laughs> that's why you have to can close a lot faster. Work. Or less, or less, or less if you are with Stacia. Yeah. <laughs> you want to move fast, compete against that cash. But my point is, is that, you know, you've got this, people are sitting on equity because they've had to put money down, right? There are 100% financing programs out there, down payment assistance, USDA, VA, but that 80, 20, that beautiful, like conventional first with that second, second mortgage or second money, purchase money, second, look at that, it went away. And so people have equity. <laughs> and so the other thing that's happening right now with, with interest rates being really low, and I encourage people to really look at their financing. Um, I'm not a licensed financial advisor or an accountant, but again, we kind of know enough to be dangerous and that we can look at things and say, you know what, 
you've got this debt that's sitting here that's revolving and it's really hard to get in front of revolving debt. Um, your, your APR and your interest rate on that is you know, north of 18%, 22%. You've got these car loans out there maybe potentially that are too high. I would say revolving debt first, fixed debt, car loans, student loans, things of that nature second. Um, but maybe we can pull some equity out and really get in front of um, paying off this debt and really um, consolidating this debt into your equity position. So doing a cash out refinance. Now, the difference between a rate term refinance and a cash out refinance is the interest rate is higher on a cash out refinance than a rate term refinance. Okay, And the reason for that is because um, it's a higher risk. Everything in mortgage financing is risk based. That's a higher risk to the investor and to the lender to access equity, pull it out, and then pay off and distribute towards debt. But oftentimes it makes a lot of sense. Um, and so maybe your payment's going up $120, but guess what? Your actual, you, you now are not paying $300 a month or, or trying to you know, do, do these large chunks on your, um, your um, principal, or sorry, no, uh, your uh, credit cards. And you can actually yep. take that $300 payment that you've been doing and maybe your mortgage is going up 120, but you could take that 300 and apply it to your principal. And then, I mean, then your equity position skyrockets. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So we kind of look at all of these options and scenarios for people um, because we want to make sure that, I mean, money's money's cheap. It's rates are low and um, they're going to stay low for a while, I believe. Although <laughs> we have no crystal ball. I think the world right. has taught us right now that nothing is predictable. Um, you know, what's interesting and, and what I'm excited about, you know, obviously the vaccinations coming out and that that could turn all of this on its head um, tomorrow. And yeah. um, Good point. well, I don't think we're getting vaccinations tomorrow. I think that really, truly as, as the world sort of repairs itself from the pandemic and whatever that future state looks like, um, we're gonna see, we're gonna start to see more money coming back into the economy, people getting back out to normal, um, life going back to normal. And that's gonna, they, they're gonna wanna kind of do some inflation. They're gonna wanna kind of raise rates to recoup the debt that we are currently in, which is a lot. Yeah. 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 So if we have to summarize, you know, generally like why it's not um, the best idea for everyone to refinance, you're saying it's as specific as it is to each person, just like their mortgage loan sure. that they get. And so they need to be thinking about, you know, is it a half point or more lower? Will they get a half point more or lower? How long are they going to be in the home? Or do they have plans of selling? What were the other things you think yeah, I mean, level to um, consider. If, it's, if it's not a half a percent, if you're looking at all of your debt, right, and you're thinking about consolidating, maybe your rate goes yeah. up a little bit, but actually you're really saving from a from an overall financial perspective around what the debt right. is going to pay monthly. Um, and then, um, you know, I, my big thing is just let's make sure we're going to recoup that cost and not sell that house in the next, you know, month or, or two, yeah. Yeah, two yeah. years or whatever yeah. it may be. But honestly, yeah. I mean, I just did an analysis for a client this morning that was um, purchased at the beginning of this year and um, they want to sell in four years, which is why that was stuck in my head. And uh, the cost, the, the difference, the delta between what they were at, what they what they could be today, um, which is, you know, 11 months later, um, they're going to recoup their cost in less than a year and a half. And so for them, right. it totally makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. I'm but if you're working with you, Stacia, is that, you know, it's not just turning your paperwork and here's what, you know, here's the rate we can give you. It's a total education. You get a complete education and, um, you know, and you really dive in and look at the bigger picture for people and not just the short term saving money today. What is your plan for the long term? Yeah. And, you know, financially, where, how can we put you in the best position? Yeah. So again, that is why, you know, we always, um, love it when clients choose to work with you because um that is that is a lot more important than what i think people really know and understand you know i mean yeah, have yeah, someone yeah. have an advocate on your side really educating you about you know all the different pieces to this it's huge it's absolutely huge right. if, if you call bank of america they you, they would not be having that conversation with you or you know some big bank yeah. Well, and it's really easy for people to sit around the dinner table and like brag about what interest rate they have. But like, <laughs> if they're not going to recoup those costs before they right. sell, like what, what yeah. Matt, like they might actually be making a worse decision. You know, right. you hear about those. I yeah. luckily don't have any friends, thankfully, or if they start to talk about interest rates, I'm like, <laughs> okay, we're done. <laughs> but, yeah, but like, you know, people sit around and 
brag about that. And it's like, well, are you really making a smart decision for yourself yeah. or do you just want the lowest number? Yeah, there's a lot to understand for sure. There's, yeah. there's fun. Yeah. And I think, you know, the, re the reality of the situation is, I mean, when I bought my first house, my rate was seven and a half percent. So yeah. rates are significantly low. Like totally. I was just talking to a client prior to this and they were like, oh, okay, I understand. They're like, okay, so 2.75. And I'm like, mm -hmm. they're like, wow, that's really low. And I'm like, you're right. It is <laughs> really low. Like, it's amazingly low. And it's amazing. you know, I, I get so amazing. excited to hear those numbers when people are like, oh, you know, Stacia got, us, Stacia, Stacia got us this rate. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's like free money, you know? It is. I mean, it's a, it's a fabulous yeah. time to buy and it because is. money's so inexpensive Yeah. and it, your buying power is so much more powerful. And it's just a really fabulous time to potentially, um, you know, recoup some of the equity you have in your property and, and realize it, recognize it and, and potentially lower, lower your debt. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. So great information, Stacia. Yeah, really helpful. I think it's a great listen for people who are thinking about refinancing. Does it make sense for you or not? Absolutely. Okay, cool. Where can people find you, Stacia, just one more time so we know, or they yeah. know rather, where to check you out? <laughs> um, you can find me at delightfulrefuge.com and that will take you to our website. And then of course, we're on social media as well at Delightful Refuge. Okay, awesome. We'll link to your contact information in the show notes. Thanks so much for being here. We really Thank appreciate you. you, appreciate all of your knowledge Always. and love having you here. It's my pleasure, you guys. Thanks for inviting me. Thank right. you.